Hello, and welcome to DWTT. This is my five, and I'm Gary, and uh, this is my channel, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Arsenal 2, the other team 1, and you know who the other team is, I don't have to explain that, um, you know who that is, and uh, you know what, the screen's a little bit off, so you know what, so let's get into it, oh, screen's good, let's just get into it, all right. Arsenal got three points in a game that's, you know, coming in. Didn't know how it was going to go. I was hoping for a win. I actually had the game a 4-2 win for us, and uh, that was my prediction. And you know what? That was probably, <laughs> you know, if the game went to four, we might have been able to do that. We were able to put away some of our shots. Um, and the way that they finished off the game, maybe that second goal would have come, but it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, so, but, you know, I'll take it. 2-1 is good. Um, so we'll get into it a little bit to start with the lineup. So look at the lineup. First thing you notice is that, uh, first thing we notice, right, is that, um, the one thing that I notice is that Bamiyang is missing from that lineup. And, uh, hmm, there's a little bit of a, you know, story going into the, the game that our Bamiyang was supposed to start. Uh, coming from the, you know, coming from the mouth of Arteta, but uh, the, for the, the disciplinary reasons, he wasn't going to play. He wasn't going to start anyways. Um, then it turns out he was late. Who's late for the North London derby? The captain for Arsenal, that is who. Doesn't matter why, doesn't uh, matter how, you just can't be late for that game. you got to be on time. There were pictures of him driving in the traffic and stuck in traffic. And you know what? That's just not, you know, you <laughs> on that day of that game, you've got to be early, very early. You got to be the first one in there. You're the captain. And you were late. You were going to start, but um, that was the one thing that we noticed. Even though Lacazette probably was the better fit for the kind of style that we're going to play, but it, you know, Aubameyang was supposed to play and then doesn't because he's late. That's a uh, pretty doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. But anyway, so Lacazette's up top. Then you've got Emil Sofro, Erdiger, and Saka right behind him. Imagine that. You've got a 19, 20, and uh, I think 22, 23-year-old all right there up front, right behind Lacazette. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought, okay, that'd be nice to see. And then behind them, you've got Jaka and Partey, our, you know, our midfield. And then you've got Tierney, Gabriel, and Cedric right behind, you know, on the back line with Leno. And one of the things that I wanted to see in this game um, was to see how, you know, see with any improvement from Zagar Partey and Tierney. From the last game, I think they were a little bit, you know, a little bit rusty to me. And uh, I was hoping to see them improve in this one. <laughs> My initial thoughts, and I'll get into that, basically was that, you know, Definitely Tyranny looked okay, looked good, sorry. Partey, you know, does what he usually does in soccer. They looked a little bit off, but uh, upon reviewing that game, that first half anyways, so Partey was actually the one that just, you know, was uh, definitely <laughs> behind the other two. Tyranny definitely was leading the pack, but Saka definitely had, uh, definitely put a lot of pressure on them. And I know he was down on the ground a lot. And, you know, if you go back and look at that first half, you'll see why. He basically wasn't a threat any time he got the ball. Didn't seem like it as much because we kept attacking from the left side, but on that right side when we did, he was there. It just We didn't get as much uh, chances coming off, and shots never came out of, uh, out of it, but he was a threat. Um, so, you know, take a little look, you know, look at the bench, and once again, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing is that our bench is pretty strong, and that's a, you know, it's a good thing. We uh, continually have a strong bench. You know, we've got uh, Chambers and Holding back there for defense, Bellerin as well. Uh, and any Ceballos, okay, not the strongest midfield bench, but they can come in and do a job if needed. And then you got William Pepe and Bamiang. So you got definitely, if you needed to get some goals or if you wanted to close out the game and you wanted some fresh legs, we definitely had that. So this was, um, you know, you know, another good lineup for us. Uh, what else do we have here? So, like I said, I looked at the three our three top players, uh, Sacker, Tierney, and Partey, and just wanted to see 
see them. You know, initially I thought they were quiet, you know, at least second part anyways, but like I said, upon reviewing it, uh, they did really well, and um, it's hard to see everything during the game, but you go back and take a look, you see some extra things there that looked really good. Um, one of the things that stood out to me is that in the first 15 minutes we were on we were threatening them. We just never got anything to the goal, or you know, into the you know, we got we hit the po hit the the bar a couple times in that first half, and um, just didn't come out for us uh, until later in the game. Uh, one thing we know you notice is that the the front three for for the that other team just you know, or their 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 attacking threats just to say that just were really quiet quiet for most of the game until you know to about 75 minutes then they kind of uh, woken up by then they were down down two of those three but uh saw him going off after 19 minutes and when you kind of look at that when he went off uh, he, he takes a run and uh tries to take a run on a long pass coming in but cedric is right there and um, that probably was the case the whole game because you didn't hear much from Son on coming off that, you know, on his left side. And then you didn't hear much from Bale on the right side with Tyranny there. But I think Bale just isn't the same guy. But on that run from from Son, you see him take off. Cedric is right there. Don't know what would have happened if he didn't pull up. But he was there definitely for that ball. And Son pulls up. And then next thing you know, he's out. Pulled hamstring. And, you know, and then from there, it kind of, uh, the game kind of changed a little bit. Lametta came on, and as you know, he made his Rubina shot, or, or Rybina, depending on who he, who's talking. And, um, you know, from then on, I think, you know, the game kind of, we kind of woke up at that point because we realized, you know what, we've had opportunities to score, and we didn't. And uh, we were able to get a shot in before the end of the half, which was nice. Uh, tyranny. We'll get into him a little bit, and we'll talk about the, all the shots and scores that we have. But, you know, we, I think we just sometimes need that little jolt. And uh, today the jolt was them getting their goal, even though we dominated pretty much most of the game. And uh, once they got their goal, we definitely pushed it some more and were able to get it. So, all in all, 75 minutes, good game. 15 minutes, not so good. But we'll get into that. I guess we'll talk about it a little bit more. Maybe we'll talk about at least the last 15. Um, you know, we started, I think we started tiring one and uh, two. Some of the subs coming in didn't kind of give us the jolt that you wanted, especially if we were trying to defend. Um, Pepe came in at halftime, but that was more for um, Saka being, I think, a little... Uh, I think he got hurt on, uh, or I think they said maybe he pulled up, you know, had a hamstring or something like that. And they just wanted a precautionary to pull him out and hopefully he'll be ready for the weekend. If not Thursday, I have a feeling he's not going to play on Thursday, but definitely we need it for fr for the weekend game against West Ham. So, uh, then, you know, we put in some subs later on, El Nenny and William, but I don't think they kind of helped out as much as, uh, we thought they would. And, uh, that other team took advantage of it, and basically, it was their time. You know, it's like our f f first 15 minutes of the game were ours. It, the last 15 seemed to be theirs, and uh, they took a, took advantage of us, kind of either being one being tied and maybe two kind of getting out of our our shell as we tried to close out the game by, you know, not being a th as much of a threat. And uh, they took advantage, and they actually got a goal, but it got it was called back on an offside. They hit the post. Gabriel made a stop. I mean, it was just a la that last 15 minutes where you had your heart pumping, you know, a little scared there. But otherwise, we, we were able to pull it through and get the game. Um, you know, Romelu got a red, and uh, it was probably worth, worthy of it because he definitely was, you know, came in to do his job, and part of his job was to kind of wild us up and knock us down many times, and he pretty much picked on anybody he could. Xhaka, Saka, I mean, you name it, he um, party everything, even. He basically had a touch of everybody on the field. Uh, eventually caught up to him, and he got sent out of the game, probably later than he should have, but uh, anyways, he got out. So, <sighs> I try to give you as much as I could on the game, but that's um, that's it. We're just trying to get into uh, my five now. Um, like I said, all in all, really good game for Arsenal. Um, we had most, most of the shots, most of the shots on target. Um, 
we pretty much dominated that game. If you, you look at it from the first 75 minutes, it was just us. And then uh, th that other team basically was just kind of uh, wilting under our will, essentially. So that's what I like to see. I wanted to see a game where we took it to the other, play the other team as opposed to us trying to defend what they could do best. All right, so let's get into it. Um, let's go to our... <sighs> My, my five. All right. So everybody ready? Here we go. All right. So there you go. So there's um, my five. And uh, as you can see, uh, Tyranny, Parte, Lacazette, Cedric, and Saka were kind of the players that uh, I wanted to take a look at. And uh, as I told you, the three top players I definitely want to take a look at and uh, kind of have the order maybe a little bit off from, you know, maybe the, the, the preference, but uh, we'll get into it anyways. So let's start out with uh, Tyranny. In the last couple of games that he's come in, he's looked lo looked definitely looked rusty, and uh, probably just needed more game time. And we saw it. We saw it. <laughs> we saw a lot of Tyranny. I mean, uh, he was my man of the match for the game, but there are others that were deemed worthy of it as well. Um, his combo play with Emil Schufero basically meant both of them were. Uh, their combo play was just great, and it was threatening, and it um, gave it allowed us to um, it allowed us to basically control that game on the left hand side. It, you know, it was good to see they were they had to um, they had to uh, what did they have to do? They they really didn't have an answer for it, no matter what they did. If it was Tyranny coming off the coming off the end or can't come having any combo play with Emil Surfro. It was um they they had to pick and choose and no matter what they did, they always lost. Uh Tyranny put in many crosses and I was just waiting for one of our players to get to the end of it, to to, to one of them, and it did happen. Um he had Doggedy on the on the run the whole game, basically. They just couldn't he couldn't keep up with him. You know, and also on the defensive end, you didn't hear much from Bale. So part of that was tyranny, but part of that also was Gabriel being there to back him up as he actually took off down. down. And then eventually, finally, one of the, his crosses did make it home. Erdogan was right there for the shot. It was deflected, but it went in. Um, you know, and that basically, you know, from then on, it was a tie game. And we had our opportunity to kind of get ahead later on. But uh, all in all, Tyranny, for me, was uh, man of the match. Had a really good game, and I enjoyed that. So next up, we'll talk about Partey, one of the, the big three, as I call him. Once again, he's always good at, with the ball in traffic. Um, went down a little bit too much for me, and I hate seeing him on the ground because it just sometimes he's not going to come get back up. Uh, but he, um, all in all, you know, he does... He does, <laughs> what he usually does was just control the ball in the middle of the field and uh, makes it easy for both, uh, uh, you know, both the midfielder, Zaka, to, um, you know, be able to do what he needs to do. Um, he took some long shots and, you know, I guess at some point either he's going to stop taking them or he's going to get better at them because they're just never you know, anywhere close to the goal. But like I said, Partey did, you know, for, for me, he had a really good game. Um, not, yeah, you know, I feel like he was still far from where he's, um, perfect and back in form, but, uh, he's getting better each time he plays. Uh, he, he played, I think he played the whole game and, uh, we could tell towards the end it was pretty much tiring and, uh, he probably needed to come off a lot sooner and, uh, get some rest. But, uh, all in all, we'll take it. Hopefully, you know, probably he may not play next game, but he'll definitely be ready for West Ham and hopefully he gets better each time he's out there. And uh, next up is Lacazette. Um, he had kind of an up and down game for me. You know, he had uh, initially all, what I saw from him was, you know, he missed. You know, he he was on the attack, which was just good, but then his finishing and putting shots on goal was just really difficult. He <laughs> made a really good play in midfield, could not make the player and try to get around it, but it was taken down. And then after that, he had there was an there was a couple opportunities where he, where Mills Rufrell took the ball down, and uh, like we were doing most of the game, if they didn't allow us to come all the way through, we would cut it, cut pull it back, and he got a 
two pullbacks, two back passes from Emil Souffro, and uh, one he missed the target uh, wide, and then the next one he kind of, I think he just was didn't have his feet ready, so he stepped over it and let it go through. Um, would have liked to see him actually, uh, you know, be able to get a, be prepared and ready for anything that's coming at him, but he didn't. He stepped over it. it seemed like a lost opportunity for me. And then later on, Saka also, once again came through. Like I said, Saka was definitely on the attack, uh, pulled across in, and uh, like I said, once again, did not have his feet ready, and I wasn't able to, you know, I guess probably wasn't, not unless he wasn't, not that he wasn't ready, but just couldn't get to the ball in time. And uh, the, the play, the ball kind of got covered up by the defense. Um, then later on in the game, as you know the play, Pepe makes a tremendous pass straight through the middle, right to Lacazette. Uh, he tries to take a shot and uh, misses it, but uh, Sanchez runs through his runs basically through his back, knocks him down. PK, a lot of controversy on that. But early in the game, similar thing happened right in the middle of the field. Partey makes a pass, gets hit from the back, taken down, free kick Arsenal. Exact same thing happened on that shot. Yes, he missed it. Doesn't really matter. You just can't take a player down like that. We get the PK. He goes in smooth and calm and controlled and puts it in the right corner. Goalkeeper never had a chance. All right. So next. You know, other than that, uh, you know, he had, he had a good game. I would have liked to have seen him maybe put a couple of shots on goal. But, uh, you know, he probably should have had at least another goal in, the, in, in there with the three opportunities that I had. And then... One of the things that also I noticed in the game is that as a team, when that ball was coming back, especially when it's coming back to the to the front of the uh, the box, a lot of our players just weren't ready to take that shot. I know it's long, but, you know, I think we had them kind of stepping backwards and you had an opportunity to put a ball on frame at that point. Um, but anyways, you know, that was kind of my synopsis on that. And um, next up, you've got uh, Cedric. All right. Uh, all right, so yeah, one uh, on the right hand side, um, he's going against Son. Son was pretty much quiet for that first 15 minutes, and eventually was out of the game. Then he had to deal with Lamella, I think, or Lamella had moved in. But Cedric had a really good game defensively. I think he was there the whole time. That's one of the things I like about him is that he gives us a lot of stability with the defense. Um, and I think when Tyranny is attacking on that left hand side he comes back and it defends pretty well for there so i'll take that i mean i didn't really see anything negative from him a lot of positives moving forward on the attack he um, was able to get when when lacazette stepped over that one ball cedric was right there and if not getting bumped by uh lucas mora he probably would have put that ball through the goal he got bumped off just enough that threw him off and the ball hit the outside of the uh, the post and went out. Otherwise, I think he would have um, probably scored there. So a tremendous shot, but just, just off of it. Like I said, you know, he was playing on the side with Son. I think he quieted him and Son pulled up a hamstring just trying to get by him, which I think partly, you know, it could, it's definitely, you know, you don't like to see injuries, but I think the pressure that we put on them made it hard for them to uh, to attack us. All right, so that's Cedric. I'll take him any day. Um, I like him there in that starting position. Last but not least is Saka. Like I said, I thought he had a quiet day, but in but in reality, he actually had a really good day. A uh, really good day uh, for the, the 45 minutes that he was out there. They were knocking him down. One, because uh, he, he's always been a threat, but, you know, he showed it. He showed it during the game that first half when the ball came to the right hand side he was on the attack threatening threatening every time looking to go towards the goal at all times putting crosses in i don't think he got, i don't think he got any shots off but he definitely was threatening enough that they um they they had they had uh they was you know they had to be threatened by it um he you know he uh there were a lot of long passes that were coming towards him a couple of long passes he just couldn't get to the end of them but he showed it, you know, threatening. You know, he was just showing that he was a threat out there. Um, I would have liked to have seen him maybe try to attack the ball sooner. At uh, one point, the goalie did come up and uh, intercept the ball. 
uh, you know, luckily for the goalkeeper, he was able to stop it from going past him. Because if not, Saka was just going to be right there for the um, deflection and, and hopefully going, going for a goal. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I thought he was quiet, but he had a really good game for those 45 minutes. And he definitely, you know, in that game, it was kind of hard because you saw a lot of work from the left-hand side. But Saka on the right-hand side... Uh, just not as much end product in a sense that it, not many shots taken or shots missed when he came on that side, but he was definitely threatening there. And I think as a whole from both left and right hand side, we were a bother. We were bothering them and threatening them all game. So like I said, that's Saka, you know, I was going to look over a couple of other players that stood out for me. Uh, Erdegaard, Gabriel, Nemil, Sofrell. Also another, I mean, they could have made the, you know, my eight today, basically, Erdogan has been doing what he always does. I mean, he actually, he scored his, you know, scored his first Premier League goal, second goal of his career in, in an Arsenal jersey, always threatening, you know, right there. I mean, I think the that combination of having Milsruf Rowe and Erdogan there basically just, you know, we thought it was not going to work as well, but it, it's shown that it's fine, you know, and I think the fact that they can kind of interchange or Emil Odegaard steps back and Odeg and Mr. Fro comes in when Karen Tierney's on the attack just means it opens up the, the game a little bit more for everyone. It was good to see. Gabriel, I thought he was going to sit after the last game because he got, I, in many's eye, the man of the match, and sometimes we see our best in you know, the players in the previous game not get to continue that. Uh, form that they had him play again, but he did play and he looked solid at the back there. Like I said, Emil Sufro, another good game from him. Uh, some of some many others, man of the match. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? He's just you know he's what we expected him to be. You know, as long as we keep him healthy, we'll be set. The combo play he had with Saka and Emil Sufro, you know, just was really good out there. So it was good to see. Uh, on the attack, they hold the game. He was to look tired after 10 minutes like he always does, but he's always there. Uh, all in all, you know, those three players, you know, showed up. So we had, you know, we had, we actually had about eight players having a really good game. But as a whole, all 11 did really well. So, like, I try and take back from anybody else. But, you know, all 11 players played really well for us to start. And, you know, even when, when Pepe came in, we didn't miss a beat there either. So for most of the game, we had a really strong 11 against their players. Uh, and, you know, we're lucky, you know, we're lucky, not necessarily lucky, but we should have been able to put them away sooner. We were lucky and they were lucky that they got that that one shot from Lamella. Mella, or otherwise, I think we would have uh, had a comfortable win in that game. Uh, that's it for the game. I hope you enjoy my five. Uh, like I said, Arsenal two, the other team one. We get the th we get all three points. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like. And you know, right below is a comment. You can leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. Like I said, subscribe and like the, the video. Subscribe to my channel. And uh, you know, we'll talk to you later. All right, yeah. all right, Gunners, come on, you Gunners. And uh, I like to leave you with these words. Life is a journey. Don't waste the trip. Enjoy the ride. All right. All right.